Hello, everyone, and welcome to On the Ground in Rwanda. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be with you all today. My name's Harriet, and I'm events manager here at Compassion. And I've been working here for about five years now. And I am Daniel. I work in the partnership support team. I've been working in the Compassion UK ministry over the past four years. Each week we'll be focusing on a different country, and this week, as you know, is Rwanda. We are so excited to be in Rwanda this week, and we want to welcome you, whether you support a child in Rwanda like I do, or whether you just want to hear about this amazing nation, we're so glad you've joined us today. We have a chat function, it might be appearing on the bottom or to the right of your screen. Do, do send us a message, say hi, tell us where you're from, we'd love to hear from you. And we have a team here ready to answer any question you may have, so do please get involved. We also want to say a massive thank you for your support. Between Compassion UK and Ireland, you're supporting 6,834 children across 392 projects in Rwanda. Wow, that is so incredible. Thank you so, so much. And as you know, lockdown has been affecting all of us lately, including the many countries that we work in, as well as in Rwanda. And unsurprisingly, our church partners have been facing challenges during this lockdown period. However, with the COVID-19 appeal support, helping vulnerable children and families, in this time of crisis, they have delivered 74,619 food packages, 194,667 hygiene kits, and have provided medical assistance to 11,380 people. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. Thank you so, so much. It really is incredible. So I'd just love to give you an overview of what the next 30 minutes is going to look like. And we're going to start off by um, me sharing a story about a family who have been made extra vulnerable during this time of coronavirus in Rwanda. Tim Robertson will then be interviewing and praying with one of our compassion colleagues in Rwanda. So you can hear firsthand the realities and complexities that they are navigating through this coronavirus uh, pandemic. We'll then wrap up with a short update video from our colleagues in Africa followed by a Q&A session where you can drop us a question in the chat feature below. That sounds great. Let's get straight on with it then, shall we, Daniel? Absolutely. Let's do it. I'm going to share a story with you now about Rachel. In the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic, Rachel was devastated when she heard she could no longer sell pots and charcoal stoves in her local market due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Suddenly, she had lost her income to provide for her children including Pacifique, a compassion-sponsored child. With the lockdown, I was not able to get food to feed my children and myself. I earn a living making pottery. When the lockdown was announced, we were told only people selling food were allowed to sell in the market. This was a blow to so many of us. We hadn't saved money for such times, and we don't even have a garden to harvest from, said Rachel. The pandemic has most affected the children who live in urban town centres where agriculture is limited so families are unable to grow their food. Compassion's church partner is coming alongside vulnerable families like Rachel's during this time, providing food supplies. I'm so excited that the project remembered us during this pandemic and they have given us food. I give God the glory. We've been given maize flour, beans, cooking oil, soap and sugar. As a mother, I'm very happy that my children are not going to die of hunger, said Rachel. Charles, the project director, said the partnership with Compassion means the church can provide food relief to the most vulnerable families. We have been able to give food relief to over 40 families who have been affected by the lockdown, he said. Across Rwanda, Compassion has provided food relief to over 10,000 families. Now we're going to be heading over to Rwanda, where Tim is going to be speaking with Eugene, one of our colleagues out there. And we're going to hear firsthand what it's like on the ground in Rwanda right now. Welcome, Eugene. Great to see you, my brother. How are you doing? I'm so good. Uh, thank you so much for having me, brother Tim. Uh, it's good to see you again. Oh, bless you. Great to see your smiling face. And, um, you know, thank you for taking the time just to uh, be on this interview and to, um, for us to hear firsthand some of the challenges and the complexities of, uh, of, of some of the issues that you're facing right now. 
in Rwanda due to COVID-19. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to talking and unpacking this a little bit more. But, but first of all, just tell us briefly um, about your family and also about the work that you do, Eugene. Well, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Eugene Bahide. Uh, I have been serving uh, Compassion for the last uh, 14 years in the role of Senior Tours and Visit Specialist, and I enjoy it. And it's been a blessing to work uh, for Compassion. Uh, came as a young man, now uh, I'm a father. Uh, God has blessed us. Um, you know, my name, I mean, uh, I've been married, uh, married to Joy, and God has blessed us with three biological children. And uh, Grace is uh, nearly turning 12. Uh, Gabriel is eight, and the youngest, Benjamin, is uh, uh, turning three on 28th of this month. And um, uh, by God's grace, we also have Cynthia, who is a foster child, also um, a, a niece to my wife, Joy. She's been with us for uh, nearly 13 years now. And uh, God is so good. Uh, we are that family, and uh, my wife and I serve as uh, associate pastors at my church. So we enjoy serving uh, God in that capacity together. Thank you. Amen. Well, you have a beautiful family, Eugene, and uh, thank you for all that you're doing for uh, the children that you serve and for the church that you serve there in uh, Rwanda. So, um, you know, right now the world is faced with COVID-19 and uh, that's hit so many countries very, very hard. Um, but we know that the effects of COVID hit those who are living in poverty the hardest. Can you briefly describe to us uh, what that looks like in Rwanda right now? What are the challenges that you and your community, your city, your country are facing at this time? Well, uh, our country also is among the nations uh, that were affected by COVID-19. Uh, we had the first cases of COVID-19 cases uh, mid-March, uh, actually on 14th March. That's when we had the uh, first person. And as the days went by, um, it went on increasing. So uh, just like, uh, you know, uh, in a developing world, uh, countries, uh, the, the mostly affected uh, people are those living in deep poverty. Mm. And uh, they have been affected uh, in a way that uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, the, the time that we were in lockdown, of course, they could not be able to, to, to get access to uh, water, you know, where they used to like walk kilometers, go get water, you know, and they were affected in a way you know, uh, hygienically, uh, that they needed uh, to, you know, to, to, to they lacked uh, the way how to, you know, to care for themselves, uh, just like maybe the affluent uh, people would do. So um, the numbers kept increasing, but uh, because of the government's measures uh, that we have put in place, um, it has helped to kind of control, uh, even though uh, not so. 100% uh, controlled up to the moment because, uh, you know, it's, it's such a, a hell that, uh, you know, at one particular time, it, you'll see like numbers decreasing and then another time they are increasing. Mm. So, uh, yes. Thank you. Massive challenges then, you know, and, um, it, you know, I, I've got precious memories of Rwanda. You know, you often say, it, Eugene, it's the, the land of a thousand hills and a thousand smiles yes. and there's yeah. so much joy and dancing and you are a great dancer as well, Eugene. And anybody who's listening <laughs> yeah. to the Rwanda will have yeah. experienced your dancing and as you've hosted yeah. people. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. yeah, and I enjoy it. So Tim, uh, I also should have highlighted that some families were affected also uh, yeah. in terms of food, you know, access yeah. to food, you know, because yeah. some of those uh, but where, you know, uh, doing work on their farms, they could yeah. not be able to do it freely like they did. And, and those who could do, uh, who would want to go buy food in the markets at certain, uh, you know, period of time, 
the markets mm. were closed, so uh, they were affected, you know, yeah. that capacity. Yeah, that's very hard. And, and as I say, you know, such a joyful country that's been through so much is now once again facing, you know, these very, very severe um, challenges, um, as you've outlined and, and shared with us today. And we're so sorry that that's your reality. And even though COVID, um, you know, per perhaps there haven't been that many lives taken and, and every life is, you know, that's been taken is, is tragic. Uh, it's the effects of COVID. It's the effects of lockdown. It's the effects of social distancing and not being able to work and all of these things that have, you know, just created layer upon layer of extra challenges. Um, now, we want to pray into this, Eugene, uh, with you and stand with you uh, at this time. But before we do that, can you, um, can you share with us how compassion have responded to some of the needs that you've outlined? Uh, you know, we, we thank God for the church. We thank God that the church is in the local community making a difference. And help us to understand what, what have you done as a ministry to adapt to the needs of uh, the crisis right now? Well, uh, Compassion has responded uh, in an amazing way, uh, I should say. Um, yes, a big number of our staff are working from home right now. You know, we have a smaller percentage that is at the office right now, including myself. Uh, it so also happened with the uh, partner churches. They, 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 during the lockdown days and uh, all those measures put in place, they've been working from home until very recently when uh, you know, there was like uplifting of activities where a few staff could go there and work from the churches, uh, the premises. So uh, compassion uh, during the month of March through to uh, June, has provided uh, mutual health uh, support insurance. Uh, besides uh, what had been given to one sponsored child in a family, uh, now it was a time for, for compassion in the church, of course, with the local authorities to identify those mostly affected families uh, in level one, two, uh, and a few in level three, uh, yeah. according to our poverty levels. Yeah. So uh, that was helpful to them because some of those families, uh, their members, for example, if there was like a, one person working as like maybe working to in transportation, like riding a scooter, motorcycle for business, as a business or a small uh, business they were doing or a smaller job that was running literal that time, uh, they could no longer work during that time. So that's where Compassion uh, came in and helped. Uh, Compassion also helped uh, food, uh, I mean provided food to those uh, in those categories that I just mentioned. Yeah. They provided uh, food during that time. Uh, and uh, uh, food was distributed to those families because it is easy to identify those because of uh, the poverty uh, ha that has been ca ca categorized, uh, levels of poverty in Rwanda. And uh, uh, not only that, uh, Compassion went ahead and uh, uh, gave some relief assistance to uh, parish uh, church partner uh, leaders, we can say parish leaders. Uh, there was, um, you know, an intervention written that sought support, and all of them that are partnering with us, 417 churches, these wow. pastors were provided with food and hygienic materials, some basic needs that they needed in their home uh, to be able to, you know, to, 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 to save them or to prevent them from, you know, uh, COVID-19. Uh, so uh, that is what has happened, and uh, uh, these, but these, I would like to state that this support uh, is going to be uh, effective, um, uh, you know, from, uh, it started this month of August, and it will go up to October. 
the support, the relief assistance given to the church leaders. Mm. Yeah, thank you. That's amazing. And, and of course, you know, normal programs and normal practices had to be suspended. So you've had to adapt to these needs. Thank God for all the food packages and medical packages and the educational resources that have been given to these precious children as well. And what you were saying about the pastors is, is just so good that, uh, you know, they can uh, be supported too, so that they can take care of their people. Yes. Uh, if, if supporters wanted to uh, still write to children or to send gifts, is that possible right now, uh, Eugene? It, it's very possible. Uh, the, the, the smaller percentage, uh, the few staff that are here at the office, most of them are in, in uh, you know, in program, in support engagement, those who handle letters, you know, uh, and uh, so they are working very hard. Right. And, the, and the, the letter can still reach to the sponsors and vice versa. And, uh, and also the gifts um, are distributed to children. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it was, uh, we, we, we got a permission or a direction to be able to give uh, the gifts uh, uh, directly to the families. I mean the gift that comes, uh, which is specific for the children that are supported. Yeah. So they, are, they still receive it because it works. When the money comes in here, uh, compassion account, so those in finance are able to distribute to send off those gifts to the specific beneficiaries. Amazing. So, I mean, if you're listening today as a supporter, as a sponsor, write a letter. Can I encourage you to write a letter to uh, your sponsored child? It will mean so much to them and uh, just encourage them at a time where uh, things are quite difficult for them, um, not being able to be in school, not being able to uh, really be in the program, uh, facing all kinds of challenges in their lives, to, to know the love and the care of you as a supporter um, through the medium of a letter uh, would just be very, very precious right now. So if you haven't got the Compassion app, why not download that and uh, you'll be able to access um, uh, writing a letter to your child uh, quite easily through that way. Okay, so we're going to pray uh, right now, um, Eugene, with you. Uh, we want to stand with you in prayer. And we're going to be praying about uh, a number of things. I'm going to pray, you're going to pray, and uh, our supporters are going to be praying as well. And uh, the headings of those prayers are going to come up on the screen but we're gonna be praying about the spread of the virus, that that, that will be halted, that that will be stopped, uh, especially in those areas where people are so closely uh, living together. We're gonna to be praying for the Compassion staff who are doing a phenomenal job just being out there ministering to the, star, uh, to the, the families and to the communities. We're gonna be praying for the protection of vulnerable children. Um, all around the world, children are living under the pressures of lockdown and the restrictions and uh, it's created extra uh, challenges in their life. And so not least these children in Rwanda. So we're going to be praying about that and uh, also for wisdom for the leaders of Rwanda, but also the leaders of compassion uh, as they uh, lead the people in this challenging time of crisis. So if you're tuned in, please pray along with us. Use the chat box function. Uh, to say amen, to write your prayer request. Why not um, write down the name of your sponsored child and uh, present them before the Lord today. But let's join together uh, in prayer and in faith with Eugene. So let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, I want to pray for uh, the people of Rwanda today. I want to pray that you will protect them by the power of your name. We uh, speak against this virus in Jesus' name, and we pray that it shall be stopped. Lord, that you will have uh, your authority in this situation. We declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. We pray for the communities, Lord God, across Rwanda, uh, many rural communities. We pray, God, that they will have all that they need to be able to uh, combat this virus, Lord, that they will have access to sanitizer, they will have access to clean water, uh, to be able to uh, wash their hands, and uh, Lord, for all the other purposes of water as well, to stay healthy. 
Uh, we pray, Lord, Lord, for food and for uh, all the supplies that they would need. We pray for our yes, children uh, on the Compassion Project. Yes, we protect them, Lord God, and their families too. Oh God, would you watch over those, uh, those communities where people are living so closely together and uh, just help them at this time. We pray for the staff of Compassion. Thank you for our brothers and sisters who have been so faithful in ministering alongside the local church into these children's lives. Thank you that every child is known and loved and protected. And we pray for each one and for their family that the, uh, the, the support that they are receiving through the care and the love of each of these Compassion staff Lord, would just be really helpful to them at this time, whether it's in the area of food or water or medical supplies or educational resources. Father, just bless them and keep Amen. our staff safe, we pray, uh, and our Amen. local church partners safe as they minister in this way. We ask that these things in, in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. And Father God, in the same spirit and in agreement with uh, my brother Tim, we want to continue to pray to you, Lord, uh, because in your word, uh, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, you say, call upon me and I will hear, I will answer, I will show you great and unsearchable things that you do not see. Father God, we continue to pray uh, and trust you, Lord, uh, for these supported children children who face vulnerable situations, Lord, um, at a home and in their, in their neighborhood, Lord, dear Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you cover them with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray that um, uh, you put a hedge of protection over their lives, that they will continue to have faith in you, that will continue uh, to be so precious in your eyes, Lord. I pray that you protect each one of them in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, thank you that you have been so faithful to heal uh, those that we are sick. Dear Heavenly Father, out of the 13 children that we had that we are sick, and now only two are still to recover. We, we are hopeful mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. your might hand will be able to heal and save them, oh dear Lord God. Yes. Uh, thank you uh, for those families, Lord, the caregivers that uh, we are sick and you heal them. Mm. And we have seen uh, the numbers uh, decreasing. So we trust you. We continue to, 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 to believe that you alone has a solution because you love uh, all these children, Lord. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you are the reason why they were supported and they are still supported in the compassion program. We also pray for uh, wisdom uh, for the leaders in Rwanda as they continue to uh, find measures, to find controls, Lord, um, against uh, this pandemic. I pray in the name of Jesus that we we'll give them uh, strategies uh, that they can be able to handle this situation. And I pray that you give them courage and strength. Yes, Lord as they are able to, to, to deal, as, as they, 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 they get themselves into this, um, you know, fight against uh, this pandemic. Uh, we will forever trust you and uh, hope in your name that you provide solution. Mm. Thank you so much, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. Amen. And we pray for Eugene and for Joy and for the family that you would bless them abundantly, that you would supply all their needs according to your riches Amen. in Christ. And Lord, that you Amen. would keep in your good hand upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. I'm so encouraged. That's how uh, Apostle Paul prayed for the Philippians. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> bless you. Thank you for making the time today to be with us, Eugene. We've really appreciated your firsthand experience and all that you've been able to share it's meant so much to us and thank you it, for everything that you it's and your... my pleasure i'm, I'm so humbled yeah, oh, yeah. Bless i'm you. so humbled for this opportunity god bless you so much well i know the sponsors and supporters who are listening today uh, uh, will really appreciate the insight that you've been able to bring and uh, so thank you for looking after the children that we're able to invest in 
as well. Thank you so much. And we'll see You're you again. Welcome. And yes, when I pray and uh, we trust God that uh, we are able to have more visits, you know, more trips in future. I'm sure the time will come. In the meantime, Amen. God bless you. And we'll see you again. God bless you so much. God bless God. your family. Thank you. Uh, also your grandchildren. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Eugene. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, brother. God bless. Bye-bye. That was so great to hear directly from Eugene, who is on the ground there in Rwanda right now. So, so good. And Daniel, it was so great to hear about what he was talking about, the pastors, and how our colleagues in Rwanda are helping pastors by providing them with food and hygiene supplies for themselves so that they can then be in a really strong position to help the children and families that are in such great need in their care. It's just amazing. Absolutely, Harriet. It's, it's so important that we have people who are willing to provide support to these children and families in this very difficult pandemic times. Because, you know, if, if parents can't go out and work because of mandatory isolation, then families can eat. And we know things like finding water is absolutely a luxury for most of these families. So mm -hmm. amazing and praise God for this intervention in this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And we just want to um, now go to a video from an update from our regional colleagues in Africa. So watch your screens, enjoy this update, and we'll see you in a bit. Bonjour and hello compassion. The first cases of COVID-19 appeared in Africa in late February. Since then, the World Health Organization estimates there has been over 118,000 positive cases in the African continent. So what are the challenges Compassion Africa is facing during this pandemic? First, there is the issue of food security. This year in East Africa, locusts and floods have already weakened agriculture. The pandemic and lockdowns have made these problems much worse. The United Nations warns that half of all African jobs could be lost to COVID-19. As a result, families are faced with the terrible decision to either face starvation or risk infection by going to work. Children under five years old are especially vulnerable to hunger and malnutrition. In response, our national offices have been working with the frontline church partners to distribute food and nutrition packages. We have also been using cash transfers to assist families more directly. Our frontline church partners visit children and families. They not only provide supplies for hand washing and sanitizing, they also share good scientific information about how the virus is spread and what to do to stay healthy. This is just the beginning of a crisis for Africa. It has the potential to send thousands or even millions of people further into poverty. But we know that God is with us. Thank you for your prayers and support. Thank God for our local church partners who have availed themselves to support the children and families during this very difficult time of the pandemic. Definitely. If after hearing what you've heard from Eugene today, you're feeling moved to give, we'd love to give you the opportunity to do this. You know, we've just launched a really exciting new intervention in the Nagoma district of East Rwanda. And it's helping support 30 mothers and babies there. And we would love to tell you more about it. As much as 35% of women in this community are illiterate. As you can imagine, not being able to read and write brings a multitude of challenges. On top of this, as family size increases, pressure to provide for the children often leads to men abandoning their families. This leaves many women alone and struggling to feed large families. Sadly, this can lead to severe malnutrition for the babies. Due to poverty, the rate of stunting in children under five in this community is as high as 44%. By supporting child survival at this centre, you can help mothers who are living in poverty with the vital support that they need at this time, with things such as food packs, hygiene kits, home visits, all the things that they need for them and their babies to thrive in this really extra challenging time of coronavirus in Rwanda. 
That's right. You can hit the button or link that's appearing in the chat right now if you'd like to donate to this brilliant intervention helping to support moms and babies in Rwanda. If you donate using this link before midnight tonight, your donation will go straight to this special intervention in Rwanda. Any donation you can give will make such a difference. So thank you so much in advance. Yes, thank you so, so much. And we hope you've loved this update in Rwanda uh, and praying with us today. We've loved having you with us and we're so glad you joined. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for your time. And I'll see you again next week with updates from Guatemala. Yep, see you next week. Bye. Bless you, bye. Uh...